man, what's that? We're taking another junkyard trip? What? Three vlogs in a row where we've had to do some junkyard stuff? That might be a record. But anyway, welcome to today's installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, sorry for the AC noise. It is very warm in here. It's a little over 80 degrees, 82. And um, it is warm in here. Sorry, I need to be cool. Hey, we are going to the junkyard. Because uh, I've already mentioned that like, you know, five times already. But we're going to the junkyard because, well, I don't know if you guys may remember this, you guys may not remember this. But uh, a little over a year ago, we had an issue with my mom's CD player in her 2014 Escape. <laughs> Put this back in. It loads. It makes a noise. Yeah. No good. And uh, at the time, the uh, actually just about any junkyard around here that I can go and you know pull parts off of they did not have that generation escape uh, available so this entire like you know year my mom hasn't been able to use her CD player and my brother kind of got her on the Spotify train and you know but every now and then she still asks me when I could fix the CD player so as luck would have it, when we went out to the local junkyard to try to find parts for my brother's fusion, the uh, APEM situation, I happened to notice, oh man, there's a traffic accident over here. Hold on. Yeah, that was a good one. Hope they're okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, I happened to notice at least three of these escapes in the junkyard and uh, I didn't really look a whole lot into them but I walked by at least one of them and had noticed that it had the same stereo system as the one that my mom's has. Uh, the dash was not all torn apart it may be a, a more recent arrival um, so nobody really got to it yet. The CD player is probably still intact. So we're gonna go and we're going to kind of scout you know these out um, pretty much like I said in the last vlog uh, hopefully it works uh, there's a chance it might not work but we're gonna try it anyway on a side note I just want to add we're not gonna replace the entire head unit of my mom's I am I've had luck with this in the past but we're going to just take the drive out and put it into my mom's existing uh, head unit. That way we don't have to worry about there being a lockout issue with the, you know, the uh, stereo not being written to the, the VIN of the car. Um, I've had really good luck with doing this in the past with my own cars on just opening up the drives or opening up the head units and just swapping the drives over. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do, and uh, as always, since it's a junkyard thing, we're going to cross our fingers and hope that when we, we get it home and we, we get everything all situated, we hope that it works uh, properly. Yikes. Oh boy. Alright, yellow jackets in the expedition mirror. All right, so they have uh, two of these escapes. One's a 13, one's a 14. Obviously, if we can get the 14, then that'll be our better bet. What row is this? I don't even know where I'm going. It's the worst thing about being out here on a sunny day is these this yards full of yellow jackets. Is this a washing machine? Alright. 
Got a stereo. Yay. What year is this? This is this is a 13. Alright. That shouldn't be a problem. I gotta get into this thing. This is convenient. Alright. So that one is there. Looks like somebody already took the screen out. Um, let's go find the 14. But at least we know this one's here. Wish I knew what road this was. I don't remember where I saw the other one last time I was here. in the Chrysler section now, so would not be past these. Alright, um... Five Taurus wagon. This was right before they changed it to the uh, well, the bubble style. It says done. See what I mean, guys? This is not good. Country gold. Dang. this one now anyway yeah what a uh, what a gem oh it's got the 3.8 wow all right Well, I found the 14. I don't know if I can get into it. Ugh. Shoot. I don't think I can get into this one. It's way too close. That water's deeper than it looks. Honestly, there's holes in these boots. But it looks like it's got it too. So, I guess worst case scenario. I think we're going to go back to the other one and try it first. No hidden surprises anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, that was close call. 
I'm gonna try not to get into this one if I don't have to. Especially when airbags out, you don't know. I didn't bring gloves today. I think if we stand on the outside over here, I have a pretty good chance of getting to everything. So I brought everything we need. We just need seven millimeter uh, for all of the hex screws. We need a 25 Torx. Um, that's pretty much it. So we have all those taken out. Should just be able to get this thing out of here now. No? There we go. So then there's two sevens on the top of the face. for the crappy angles. Pry this guy out of there. Somehow. Whew. Then it pulls out. Oh, that screw is gone. All right, and then there's a bunch of connectors there. All right, guys. So we have our unit. Like I said, hopefully, hopefully it's good. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if maybe anything's in there, but I can't really see it. All right, let's um, let's go. Honestly, it's hot out here, and uh, apparently I opened up the uh, I opened up the doors to a large swarm of yellow jackets. So let's get out of here. All right, folks. So we are on location for this particular uh, task this time uh, because there's no point in me driving her car back to my house. Um, worst case scenario, if I don't have everything to get into the stereo, then we'll just take both stereos back to the house and do it there. But as far as like removing this, uh, this time we are just gonna do it here at my mom's. Um, so this is, uh, I got the air on because it is, you know, obviously extremely warm. We're just gonna use the air and stuff uh, until we need to unplug things. So, we need to get the little hat off. I don't know why I call it a hat. We didn't have to do this part at the junkyard. That is hot. And now uh, we need to we need to get the, the two screws under this mat here. And those, uh, again, are the sevens, which is already loaded up onto the thing. I probably could have saved some of those screws. I probably should have, in case, you know, we uh, end up losing something or dropping something. I guess we can only hope for the best. Like deja vu all over again. So the screen is in the way this time. Um, we have to obviously remove the screen. That's where the Torx bit comes into play, if you guys don't remember. We obviously didn't need to use it 
the last time around because it was already taken off. So that's where the T25s come in. Let's see, there's one on the left side toward the back and there's one on the right side toward the back. Sorry, I'm trying to load this. Socket, there we go. So these are very crucial not to not to drop. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Okay, so one there. The other one's over here somewhere. Flip it back like that for now, and then that uh, other seven's right here. Let's not let this one fall into the back of the dashboard this time. Okay, there we go. All right. So now we can pry up. Do the face. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, this face goes in, I think, in a particular way. Uh, I obviously didn't care how it came out when we did the junkyard one, but I'll have to look at the tabs. There's something particular about how this face sits in there. Or maybe it was that top piece, I don't remember now. Sometimes you just gotta use a little more force. Oh, they're not stuck in there. So. Um, it was a top piece. I remember something had to like angle downward or go in a specific way. This guy. It might have been this guy. Yeah, because it's got the weird hooks, so it kind of has to go like down. We'll worry about that when we get to it. Alright, so now we've got this done. I'll just toss this up there for now. Let's get this vent out of here. Maybe. <laughs> oh, the vent is stuck. I gotta put the vent back on the face. Alright, that's gonna be a future thing. Let's get our seven back. Let's take this this one out here. These sevens are different than the ones that are coming out of all the plastic pieces. Um, these are a little more finer thread, so I don't think you can really mess these up. Or maybe you can. I don't know. Being blocked, so let's do this again. And 
And this is the sad part because now we have to turn the car off, which means we're going to lose the AC. And it's finally starting to feel good here. Sorry, cancel. <laughs> Let's open the door now, let all the heat in. Alright, so I want to try to unplug this very carefully. There we go. Really can't get this vent out. Jeez. Oh, there we go. I think that was just one of the clips. Look at that. And here we go. Yay. All right. So first and foremost, I want to undo the little uh, coaxial type cables. I don't want to end up pulling those. So we should just be able to... Those are important, so we can't we can't ruin those. All right, so those come out like that. We can use this here. We can use this here. Cool. All right. I didn't bring you anything. I'm sorry. Here. For real, I don't have anything for you right now. Okay. So hopefully we brought all the stuff that we need. On the back. And we'll do the back of the used one. I guess we'll just try to use our hands. Oh, one more. nervous to find an actual CD in here. That's either they're going to tell me that they forgot about it or <laughs> the drive doesn't work. In which I will be crushed. Alright, put this there. Oh, we got it. Yay. It's not like I'm returning it anyway. Hey, there's no CD in here. Maybe that's a good sign. Maybe. Yeah, there's no warranty on it, so it's not like it's going back anyway. <laughs> take this one, take this one.
No. That did not loosen that up at all. What are we missing here? I think it's in some notches. Yep. It's notched in there. Okay. So we have to bend the back a little bit, I think. Or the front. Uh, hmm. So we got the one side loose. Did. There it is. All right. And now we got to worry about the ribbon cable. Hmm. There we go. All right. All right. So the used drive is now free. So now we just got to take the broken one out. Pretty much by doing the same thing. Alright, this is the broken one, so both of them are now pretty much carcasses at this point. Uh, Alright, so now we'll put the broken one here. Here's the one from the yard. They look identical, so there should not be any issues. Um, I have to get the thing hooked back up now. It goes in this way. That's the hard part, getting the ribbon back in. So we'll get the ribbon in, and uh, I'll get the CD player situated, and then before we put everything back together, we'll take this outside, plug it in, and make sure that our, our CD player does indeed work. The ribbon cable has successfully been plugged in, and uh, I'm probably going to need two hands now because, as you can see, there are little notches on the uh, edges of this CD player. And I think that's kind of how, you know, they they get locked in there. So I'm going to need both hands to try to fit this in there. And, like, i got to pull the, you know, the body apart somehow a little bit. And that way we can get it to, to fit in there. All right, so the trick to this is when you go to put it back in, you want the front to kind of go in first. So that way, like I said, these little tiny, teeny notches there will kind of slide into their grooves. And as you can see, the screw holes will line up. And then when you're putting the back in, uh, like I said, you, you kind of have to pry the back of the body apart and kind of slowly wedge this in. And then that way, all of those, those two tabs there will line up and then the screw holes will be apparent also. So now, all I have to do is fasten these screws down and then we'll take it out and uh, give it a rip. Chloe. Alright, so here we go. I was stupid enough to decide to put the top back on anyway and screw it down just in case it does work. But that means if it doesn't work, then I gotta take it apart to fetch a CD or something. So let's get all of our connectors plugged in. At least you guys can see what I'm doing. The drive did work, it made a noise. I don't know. But it sounded like it actually worked. Um, all right, and then these guys, this one goes here. And this other one goes here. Whew. It's upside down, it's upside down. There we go. All right. Let's make sure our wires aren't doing anything weird. Let's slide it in. All right, now we gotta plug in the FCDIM. I think it's this way. Indeed. We need the AC. Okay. All right, so screen's still plugged in, I'm waiting for it to come up. There it is, radio's on. 
it's on AM. Uh, Alright, so let's fetch a CD. Let's do the Donnas. I actually really like this CD. I eject just to make sure. No CD in drive. Alright, here we go. Oh, it's making a weird clicking noise, I don't know. It's reading it. And it is playing. Alright, that's definitely a good sign, so it's it's working. Um all weird. Okay, so let's do our next track. Okay, it works. So it appears we can go through everything. That's good. Alright. Let's go back some tracks. Go back to the first one. Oh. Okay, so the CD player works, that's good. Uh, now, as far as it's, let me turn this down just a moment here. I wanna hear this clicking noise. Let's eject it. Ah, uh, no, no, see. Shoot. same issue that the other one does. It didn't, it didn't come out. <laughs> oh, no. Ah, it's the same exact issue the other one was doing. Crap. So it looks like the gate isn't opening. That little blue thing there, so that's the thing that's supposed to keep you from putting another CD in through here. It is not opening for some reason. So... I don't even know how to get us get the CD out of there at this point. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, it moves, but oh, all right. That was. So it works, but yet it doesn't work. Oh. Okay. Maybe it just sat for a while? <laughs> I don't know. Alright, so I don't know what to do. Yeah, see, it, it makes some weird clicking, like, if it's going to work, it might not work forever. Now the CD is facing down now, because I moved this drive unit out, so if I put it back, will it eject all the way? Yeah? Yes. Some old Godsmack. It's a good album. All right, old Godsmack. I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna get a phone call one of these days. <laughs> And she's gonna tell me there's a CD stuck in there. It's gonna, yeah. Okay. It appears to be happy at the moment. Let's 
try the eject. I don't know, I really feel like the clicking is not normal because unless you don't really hear it enough because of all this being covered up, but I don't know. I don't know, I think it's I think it's kinda iffy. But it is working. And right now it appears to be working perfectly fine. Uh, okay. Now, am I going to consider this a success? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what to call it right now because it acted weird. I'm not fully satisfied with the sounds of it, but it is right now doing everything that it is supposed to be doing and that was the goal is to be able to play the CDs and it is doing that so uh, like I said in the house there's no warranty with it so I mean it is what it is um, I guess right now just I guess we could take it and run with it and when the next CD gets stuck in there then I know what I gotta do Alright, so I've been sitting here for quite a while messing with it, putting different CDs in and out, and then finally I'm like, oh, we're just going to put it back together. Um, it seems to be working fine. This is the piece I was talking about. We need to kind of put the front in here like this, and then see how it kind of slides in like that. And then we should be able to use our other hand and, and kind of push it all down together. Okay, that's it. I just finished putting it back together. See, uh, uh, oh, I guess you really don't hear the clicking. Maybe, maybe it is completely fine. It is actually very quiet. Well, eh. <laughs> either way. But the good news is, yes, it, it, it is working fine. So I actually brought her out here. I showed her and I told her it's probably not going to last forever, uh, especially considering it's actually a year older than the one that was in here now, so. But that's it, I mean, done deal. It is uh, technically back to normal, much like our APIM thing, so. I guess in a way, I am <laughs> I'm two for two this week. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Alright, I'll just leave this out, leave it empty in case she wants to throw something in it. Uh, let's clean up everything and let's go home because I'm hungry. Alright guys, and there we have it. So, uh, the CD drive exchange, uh, for the most part, appears to be a success at the moment. So, like I stressed it to her, I said hopefully it'll last you a little while. Um, I know it's not going to last forever. But it is what it is. Like I said, it's you know a junkyard thing. I didn't buy any warranty with it, and even if I did want to buy a warranty with it, you know I opened up the the thing anyway, so it's you know not like so. There's no point in getting a warranty with it. But regardless, you know it's a junkyard. You're always taking a risk, um, and you know it again. It's just another little shortcut to either having to buy a brand new one from Ford or getting. Uh, a good known one off of like eBay and having to have to reprogram it to the car and stuff so uh, but if it appears to work for now we'll just let it ride and see how long it works that's all I got for today guys thumbs up comment subscribe I will see you guys next time thank you so much for watching take care